let's talk about some pluses and, uh, and, and, and some minuses. One of the, one of the big selling points of k-nearest neighbors, uh, it makes almost no assumptions about your data. So remember, naive Bayes assumes that attributes are independent. Uh, decision trees assumes a greedy strategy, one attribute at a time. Uh, K-nearest neighbors doesn't actually assume anything. It only assumes local, um, uh, local smoothness of your class functions. So it's, uh, it's a nice approach. You're not really making any assumptions. You're letting the data speak for itself as far as classification or regression does. Um, the downsides are it's very computationally expensive compared to all the other methods, nearest neighbors is more expensive than them, right? And, and the bad thing is expenses at testing time. So the bigger, uh, the bigger your training data set, the slower it will be uh, at testing time, which is a really bad thing. Um, other downsides to it is um, it's sensitive to outliers, right? Remember the first slide? A single outlier can really change the decision boundary. Um, and it's also sensitive to lots of irrelevant uh, attributes. Right? So something that decision trees, for example, ignore, uh, irrelevant attributes, naive base gets thrown off by it because the distance computations are going to be heavily affected by lots of irrelevant attributes. So it's not going to do particularly well in there. All right. So simple classifier. If it's near to you, then uh, predict its class. You can use it for both classification and regression. Uh, it's a it's, it's a complicated, flexible, non-linear classifier. It's also a non-linear regression function, right? uh, which, is, which is quite uh, powerful. Um, you do need to select the distance function, and we talked about different, uh, different options that you have. You also need to select k, which is the number of neighbors. And the way to do that is to use cross-validation. So you run it on the validation set and then see which value uh, does the best. And then I guess uh, if you do it naively, it's very, very slow, but you can um, optimize it. All right, we'll stop here. Uh, next lecture, start talking about linear methods.